what's going on good people welcome back to another episode of trading my live account today is day number 60 it's september the 5th 2023 we made some trades today so let's get into it first and foremost let's talk about all of the important levels that we have on the chart today now i want to take a, a deeper dive into yesterday's closing price i always talk about the closing price on all of my videos but today is a special situation because Friday was actually the last day that the stock market was open as well as the futures markets at the same time. But because yesterday was Monday and it was Labor Day, the stock market, the actual cash index was closed, but the futures markets were still open. So the futures went until one o'clock and they had a, a early close. They usually close at like five o'clock, but they close at one instead. So let's just talk about futures and what they represent, because even though this is a chart, it is actually something tangible behind it and it's important to understand that on days like this so when it comes to the futures market the futures market is a derivative of the actual cash market index so the value for the futures contract is directly derived from the value of the cash market index for the stock market so if the stock market is closed then the value that the futures represent when they close at the end of that session isn't necessarily as valuable as it would be if both the stock market and the futures market were open at that time and we closed the market at four o'clock like we usually do so in scenarios like these what i've learned is that not only do you go ahead and chart up the closing price from the day before the holiday but you also chart up the closing price from the session where it was a holiday and you kind of let the market tell you which one of those is going to be the most important so today was actually a situation where both of those were important so the level up here the purple line at 34,890 that represents the closing price from Friday this yellow line down here at 34,000 I want to call it 813 or 815 I think this represents yesterday's closing price on Monday from the Labor Day holiday now there will be some occasions where the closing price from the holiday doesn't even matter prices run straight past it and then they come back up to test the closing price from the last time the stock market and the futures market were both were both open so you know it's hard to really say which one will be tested on a day-to-day -day basis when you run into scenarios like this so you just got to let the, the market price action play out and let the market tell you which one of these levels is the most important so with that out of the way let's go ahead and get into the trades that we made today because i ended up using the closing price from monday as an actual entry point for my trade on trade number one so when we opened the market at 9 30 we saw that prices kind of made a double top up here we created a lower high and from that point forward we sold off pretty strongly and we started to create lower lows lower highs all the way down until we got to yesterday's closing price now once we got the ycp we made a pretty nice move back up to retest a previous level of support which is what the market should do now when it comes to trading higher lows and charting up higher lows one thing i've learned is that the higher low strategy does work well in an uptrend but it also can be very successful for you in a downtrend if you use it the right way now when you're in a downtrend you don't want to look to go long based off of prices coming back to retest a support level of a higher low instead you want to see if prices are going to push past that higher low now for me i established this higher low right here where the circle is and i drew my level of support across so you want to see if prices are going to push down past that level of support and then if they violate that level you want to see them come back retest it and then that's when you want to look for the short trade when you see prices starting to get rejected and it also helps because this level that used to be a previous swing low which will act as support should now act as resistance now that prices have actually broken through it so that was pretty much the concept that i was using when i took trade one so if we read, if we read the notes it says I went short here during the downtrend as prices came back to retest a previous swing low. This level was also YCP, yesterday's closing price. So once I got into that trade, I just simply took it back down to my scalp target. I was aiming for this level down here where we established the swing low from before. But you know me, I like to get out a little bit early before the level. I don't like to just take it all the way down to that level because sometimes it'll stop just short and I don't want to get caught up in that. So good trade on trade number one, good entry and a good exit. Now, after that, after trade one, we see a double bottom start to form. So anytime I see a double bottom start to form, that tells me that 
even though the trend is down, the buyers are kind of stepping in right here for whatever reason. And you don't really want to step in front of the buyers and try and short against this momentum that's coming in right now. Instead, what you want to do is wait for the buyers to push the market as high as they can. And then when the selling resumes, if you want to get back in, then you can. But if the buying starts to continue and you start to see signs that tell you that the buyers want to push the market even higher, you could also flip your bias and think about going long. And that's pretty much what I was trying to do at trade number two. So once we saw the double bottom, we then saw prices push back up, create a higher low. So once I see a double bottom and a higher low, especially when it comes close to yesterday's closing price, that's telling me that for whatever reason, the buyers have stepped into the market right now. So once I see that higher low get formed, that's when I start to bring over the concept that I use from the higher low strategy. So you wait for the prices to come back into your level of support and then you go long as they do and you look to take it back up either to your scalp target or to whatever major level of resistance is above. So for me, that level of resistance above was around 831, right where we established a previous swing low on the way down a little bit earlier. So I actually wanted to talk about double bottoms because it's been a minute since we actually had a chance to discuss what a double bottom is and some of the better ways to trade it. So let's go over that really quick. So this is a double bottom that occurred on September 1st this year. So notice how the market opened at 930 right here where we have our yellow dotted line. So we had a move up, sold off pretty hard, but came back into a level of support, this zone down here that had been holding up since the pre-market. So we saw one touch, came back down, saw a second touch. So right there, our double bottom gets established. So no matter how strong the downtrend might be, once you see that double bottom, I like to start looking for a higher low to get formed somewhere within the immediate future. So we see prices push up and they pulled all the way back, but they did eventually create the higher low that we were looking for at around 950. So the double bottom formed at 940 and then 10 minutes later, well, 10 candles later, technically, you got the higher low. So once you see that higher low, that's when you start to use the concepts from the higher low strategy. You just want to wait for prices to come back into that level, retest it. And as soon as they move away from that level of support, that's where you want to go long. So that's exactly what occurred not too long after that, maybe 10 minutes later. So we eventually come back, retest that level, push up, create another higher low. And then you could draw a support level uh, across there right at the bottom. And then you see prices come back into it one more time and continue to move higher. So this actually happens very often in the market. Here's another one where this double bottom occurred as a continuation pattern instead of the end of a, a down move. So this occurred at the end of a pullback. And sometimes it can happen that way where you see the double bottom happen as a reversal signal, but you also, also see, see the, the double, double bottom happen as a continuation, continuation pattern coming out of a pullback. Now this one, it had a higher low, but it never came back to retest that actual level of support from the higher low. So whenever you have a situation like that where the higher low doesn't come back to get retested, what you can do instead is look for the swing high that got established by before the higher low was made. And then you just want to draw a level of either support or resistance across the top of there. And then when prices break above it and come back to retest what used to be a previous high, then you can go low. And that's what we saw exactly happen on this one candle right here. So you pretty much had one minute or one opportunity, one candle to get in and then the market continued to move up. Here's another example, double bottom, higher low. In this example, it didn't come back to retest anything actually. Let's see. Okay, here's a good example of one. So this double bottom had a higher low that got formed right here. We pushed up a little bit, came back, retested it. And as soon as prices come back to retest support, that's when you go, that's where you go long. So that's pretty much the, the concept and the mindset that I use to trade double bottoms when I see them. And, you know, today was actually a, a good day to, you know, take that pattern. But one thing that I would say, hold on, let me go back to the today's chart. So one thing that I would say is that sometimes when you see the double bottom in higher low form, it could lead to a reversal that pushes prices higher for the rest of the day. But it could also just lead to a simple pullback that pushes prices higher to a major level of resistance and then the seller step back in and continue the downtrend. And that's exactly what happened today. We had a scenario where the double bottom and higher low setup really just led to a minor pullback, but a tradable minor pullback that you could have made profit on like I did on trade two. 
But always remember, like, it's two ways for it to happen. It can either be a reversal or a continuation pattern. So you don't want to get confused on those mindsets because if you have a mindset where you believe that it's a reversal and that it could maybe, let's say you thought it would come back up to Friday's closing price at 890 well, that type of mindset wouldn't have aligned with the actual price action and what the market was telling you. So that's why you always want to make sure you read the price action because the price action will be the only determining factor to tell you whether or not the double bottom high or low setup is going to actually be a reversal or if it's just going to be a minor pullback up to a major level of resistance. So always keep that in mind. You never want to just come into the market and say it's going to be this or it's going to be that. Let the market tell you what it wants to do. And uh, I think I'm trying to think about if I have anything else. I feel like I do. But I'm not sure. But yeah, okay, that's pretty much all I got. You know, I feel like today overall was a decent day. You know, I came in with a mindset of abundance. And I think that's really a, a key factor to come into the market with because sometimes I come into the market and I see a trade that I might not be sure about, but I feel like this is the best opportunity that I might have for a long time. So I just force myself to take it, even though it doesn't necessarily seem or feel all the way correct or all the way right. So when I have a mindset of abundance, instead, my thinking goes along the lines of, OK, I see the trade that's for me. It's not giving me everything that I want, but I know it's going to be opportunity all day. Opportunity will be abundant. So it doesn't make sense for me to just jump at this trade if I know that it's a lot of better opportunities that's coming later on down the line. So whenever I think like that, that's when I have my best day. So I want to come into the market and try and use that mindset all the time and just remember that, hey, if your setup doesn't look as perfect as you want it to look, don't take it. But if you get exactly what you're looking for, go ahead and enter the market, take that risk, and hopefully you come away with profits after you study the setup that you have. So that's really important, having a mindset of abundance. So going into tonight's back testing session, I just want to practice very well. So I want to be able to come into the session with the right mindset, look for my specific setups. And only trade when I see those. If I don't see those, I don't want to trade. And what I'm actually going to do, I will start actually uploading my practice sessions because I feel like ever since I started uploading my live trading sessions and doing my trade reviews online, it's given me more of a sense of accountability because I know it's other people out there watching me. So it's not just me that needs me to be accountable. It's the world that needs me to be accountable. And my trading has definitely got better since I've uh, actually started sharing a lot more. So now I'm going to start sharing my practice sessions because I believe that practicing the right way will lead to the results that you want when you actually trade the live chart. So I feel like if I, I put my practice sessions online, I'll have more accountability. I'll practice better and therefore I'll be a better trader. So look out for that a little bit later on. It should either be coming either this afternoon or sometime this uh, tonight. So keep your eye out for that and if you missed today's live session make sure you go ahead and check that out it's in the playlist for my trading trading my scalping strategy uh check that out if you haven't and for the most part you guys that's all i got i hope you learned a lot about double bottoms and the higher low setups and how you can use those and also how it can either turn out to be a reversal or a continuation pattern and you need to let the market tell you which one it is so i hope you learned a lot about that today because i know that i certainly did I'll be back tomorrow, September 6th, somewhere between 9.30 a.m. and 9.40 p.m. But until then, you guys, study hard and take it easy.